Hey everybody, welcome to part four of my guide for RLCS 2021-2022. Today's video, we're going to be talking about broadcast updates and technology, the utilization of Unreal Engine 5. I'm going to be your host, Adam Lowe with Thornton, breaking down everything to discuss, honestly, about what that actually means. There's a lot of people that look at this topic and go, what do you mean broadcast updates and technology? What exactly changes in this? And we're going to be talking about the focus from last year from RLCS and the transition from going from a studio to online and how to utilize new technology, primarily Unreal Engine and the rendering capabilities it has to improve things not only for online scenarios, but also for LAN events that are coming back, which I will talk about in a future video. Hey everybody, welcome back to the guide for your 2021-2022 RLCS season. We're going to be talking here in part four about broadcast updates and technology and how they're going to utilize the rebuilding of Rocket League with Unreal Engine 5 and the benefits that that engine can provide when it comes to the broadcast side of things, some of the implementations that they can make. Uh, what ended up happening is last year in March, they decided to make the conscious decision of no more lands and transition everything even before that to all online how can we make it so the broadcast can run as smooth as possible and look as nice as possible despite no longer being in a studio because there's a lot of things that you miss out on that recently i got the opportunity to go to the we play event in ukraine and just being on set working with a studio production not dealing with the delay of communication over the internet does a lot of really nice things especially as broadcast talent and the difficulty is that transition over causes some complications. Now their focus for the next season, which is starting on October 15th, is to do some things that really make a unique approach and a exciting way to view the broadcast, even if normally new graphics and new assets take a ton of time to do so. Those things, rendering them out, take way too much time. And they're telling us and promising the ability to emphasize and streamline the process so you can do it even overnight so we can get unique broadcasts in different fields from fall to winter to spring without the time and effort that it takes is something that we should all be excited for for the broadcast to add a unique flair and a specialized touch to every single RLCS broadcast to get away from the mundane, boring, same old, same old feeling that we got despite everything having to go online. So... The first part of this starts with them sitting down and talking with Andy Blondin, who is the senior product manager at Epic Games. They got together a few months back and started discussing ways to utilize these options that they've already been utilizing in filmmaking and broadcasting side of things for quite a while. These are things that were utilized at that WePlay event that I'm talking about. Uh, you guys should be seeing a video on your screens of looking at like a garage with a field and then panning out of that and looking at F1 vehicles and then to us on desk. Everything but that desk is done in augmented reality through an engine and all those things that were made were done within three weeks. That is incredible for render time and everything else. Some of the old graphics that they used, which they showcase in this video and the graphic assets that they used to use to showcase announcements as well as vehicles take months of time to render. And now they're going to be able to do that templated and quickly overnight to provide a unique feel from like team versus team or player versus player. Some interesting graphics that they can bring to the broadcast to mix things up. They talk about how Unreal Engine has been utilized previously in new set designs and virtual reality. And that can also translate to live events as well, which I'll talk about in a bit here. They plan to showcase this for the very first time in fall, like I mentioned, for the first broadcast, October 15th for the RLCS. What it's necessarily going to encompass that's what we get to wait and see. That's what we get to be excited about. What new visual craziness are they going to implement? And how is that going to carry over not only from online, but then to the live environment once we get to Stockholm, Sweden, which I'll talk about in my next video. If you guys want to make sure you know about LAN stuff, make sure you guys hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so that we don't miss out on the next guide video. The way they're doing this is they are building what are referred to as hype chambers. They're going to continue to build out these chambers, as they've called them, that they've used for announcements in the past where it has the car, the animation screen, etc. But they want to streamline the process and the development time, the render time, all the backend stuff. Because if you've seen these and you can talk about like season seven, season eight, where they have the wipe graphic and they've got a car on a rotating platform with a big LED wall behind it. Those things take a lot of time. There's a lot that goes into making those and it's not simple. It's not easy, but 
with this new engine and with the new technology, Unreal Engine is able to process some pretty incredible things at a very quick rate, which should allow us to, from broadcast to broadcast, from season to season, split to split, really utilize it and give us some thematic things. Fall is going to have a different color scheme than winter. Winter different than spring. You're going to see possible different viewpoints and different things throughout the broadcast that to the naked eye, you may not necessarily come across or notice, but you'll appreciate it when it is pointed out. It's something that every time you get a different look or a different feel. They mentioned the Lamborghini Open and the different things they did with the F-150 and the, the fun, cool, like little transfer graphics. You saw one recently in the Ukraine event that we did for WePlay that during the break, there was like a construction of a soccer ball being made down an assembly line. Those things can be done and those unique ideas you also saw with the Ford F-150 event where they were refilling the boost canisters and things like that. They may not seem like a big deal, but those little assets, those little graphic changes, those little videos that they put throughout the broadcast keeps it new, refreshing, and exciting. And it adds a little bit of a special touch. Those little things go a long way to keeping viewer retention and engagement. And people like myself that tune in almost for every single event, it keeps us invested. It keeps us excited about what's next. And that's something that's really difficult and kind of encompasses the overall issue of right now, Rocket League feels kind of stale. There hasn't been a lot of new stuff. It's just new cosmetics and that's it. We want new stuff. And when you can do that on the broadcast to the biggest audience that watches it on Twitch and YouTube, it's not a bad idea. So the implementation of this new technology and these new broadcast updates are going to help long-term and add a, a professional touch to the broadcast for RLCS. When you go and watch the WePlay event that just happened and a lot of people are like, you're telling me this is an off-season tournament and it looks better than some of the RLCS stuff? That's not okay. Hopefully we get that same kind of love and attention to detail from that that we will also then get as a standard for RLCS. It's trying to add a level of professionalism uh, to keep building Rocket League to where we know its potential is, which is one of the greatest esports in the world. There's a lot of things that happen, obviously, for the broadcast side of things, but also there's things that happen when it comes to the in-game side of things. We're talking about spectator updates, visual overhauls, things when it comes to the arena that add a thematic approach. Maybe home and away arenas, home and away decals. Even though it doesn't affect the players, you can compare it to stuff like Overwatch League. When you go and watch Overwatch League, because it is already a melting pot of ugly and chaos, what they do is they take a program that overwrites all the skins that the people are using. And it doesn't affect you client side, but for the people watching, all the decals are the same. They have a theme to them. So you know which team is on which team. And they can do that same sort of thing here with this new engine. So for you and I watching, I no longer have to watch a blue car be on the orange side and vice versa. I can actually see exactly who is on what team i can see home and away decals for team specific and there is some pros and cons to that i do think because there is less attention paid to the player personality and getting to know the players the only like individualism that you really see the iconic the personality that shines through is i can go and point and be like yes that's devo's car yes that's fairy peak's car yes that's kdop's car i know exactly who's driving that i know the specific kind of flair that they have to theirs and by putting on a team jersey, it kind of gets away from that. And I can understand the concern for that. But as a broad scale viewership, as a organization, as a professional side of things, being able to say the decals are on these sides, it's easier to understand. We can do team stadiums, team colors, team decals. All the work that goes into the esports shop is now reflecting on the field as well. Coaches, players, teams, whatever, are going to be extremely happy about this. And it also sets a precedent moving forward as much as i love that individuality if we want to be taken seriously if we want to grow our esport these are the things that have to happen these are the things that if we are trying to branch the gap between traditional and non-traditional sport these things have to happen and the fact that they're allowing sponsorships on decals in game that's a big deal that's a huge deal in detail and i think of first in esports as well so well done and round of applause for Psionics for making that happen, because that's massive. I am excited to see how they end up doing this and how it applies to the online broadcast, but I'm also curious on how they can do it live, if there's any uh, on-the-cusp changes that they can do, if they can implement these types of things for interviews and maybe bring in some different content pieces that we haven't seen before. Uh, ultimately, I think it opens up a variety of options, because if they are doing this at a faster rate and are able to render and spend less time doing it, 
it should enable them to put and allocate more time into something else. So hopefully this is just the beginning. This also applies to pulling in live stats, custom skins and decals on the cars, like I mentioned. But the ability to showcase and do live stats and, and things like that is going to make casting and everything else a lot better as well. Uh, it's also going to make the viewer who is like, if you watch like sports like the NFL, where they pull these random stats I've never heard of that just get fed into the commentators, those things really add a level of professionalism to the broadcast. And that's kind of how this whole thing feels is we're trying to make it as professional as possible, but still enable the guys to showcase personality and stuff. The less work it is on the commentators to go and find that stuff, the more time they can be focusing on owning their craft, which is which is really important. Um, ideally, Psyonix, the people that are talking in this, this whole interview, talk about they want to give the fans the best experience, which leads me to believe they're doing what they can to do the reskin and everything for that reason. They're trying to make sure that if you are a new viewer, old or longtime vet, going and watching the broadcast should be the least confusing thing possible. I want to be able to sit down and even though Rocket League in itself is a very easy to understand game, who's on what team, who's playing for who, orange versus, you know, blue. If I could just see the decal of the team, who's home, who's away, who's on the broadcast, all that stuff streamlined is going to make this a much better experience for everybody watching. It's going to increase the overall IQ of the viewer. It's going to make everybody more educated about what's happening, which is going to make for a better broadcast, which also will make us hold them more accountable, which is never necessarily a bad thing. They said that they're going to be able to do theme broadcasts overnight. Uh, the fact that Corey Lanier, the head of the Rocket League Esports team, is saying that he could make stuff like the Lamborghini Open overnight. It's pretty impressive. They also talk about the last thing and something that I think we're all happy about. Uh, the website not a good look nobody uses it never gets updated it's pretty much useless we all rely on liquipedia and that's about it uh they do mention that uh it's bad and that it needs a change and they forget that this is the second time it's changing they've already revamped it this is a re-revamp but they do plan to announce a new website at the end of the year going into the next year uh tons of features that the community has been asking for they emphasize that their website is the place you want to be on game day and not liquipedia what does that mean necessarily? Is there going to be pickums? Is there going to be certain things that give rewards to people? I think there's a lot of things that they can learn from HLTV and a lot of other esports on how to interact with the website and do a bunch of things that could be very exciting. It also may be the way to watch the esport in the future if they embed Twitch and YouTube streams and all that kind of stuff in there as well. So uh, if you go and look at the version one website, the only reason I use that as a reference is because I've used it heavily for my job when I do casting for V1. Uh, they do have a lot of features about player, bio, stats, is the match live, when's the schedule, like all those things are just automatically on the website. These are the basic things that they need to put on their new website. So I'm looking forward to, and we'll be criticizing it heavily when it comes out, if it doesn't live up to the, up to the whole name of new website. So uh, some exciting stuff that they're talking about here. And I've kind of ranted and given a lot of my own opinion on this one, but uh, part four, this is broadcast updates and technology utilizing Unreal Engine 5. You guys do you have any additional questions comments concerns about things in the future let me know in the comments down below i will try to do a follow-up video after the entire guide is over answering all of your questions from video to video but that is going to do it for this one if you guys would like to stay up to date on all things rocket league if you would like to stay up to date on the next video which is going to be part five and talking about lands because they're finally back make sure you guys hit that subscribe button turn on notifications and i'll see you in the next one peace